Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the conference call of Route Mobile Limited, arranged by Concept Investor Relations to discuss its Q1 FI23 results. We have with us today Mr. Rajdeep Kumar Gupta, Managing Director and Group CEO, Mr. Gautam Padalia, Group Chief Strategy Officer and Chief Investor Relations Officer, and Mr. Suresh Jankar, Chief Financial Officer. At this moment, all participants are in the listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session. At this time, if you have a question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Please note that this conference is being recorded. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that some of the statements made in today's evening earning call may be forward-looking in nature and may involve certain risks and uncertainties. Kindly refer to slide number two for the presentation for the delayed disclaimer. I now hand the call over to Mr. Rajdeep Gupta, Managing Director and Group CEO. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Wishing all of you good health and prosperity. Despite global headwinds and the geopolitical situation, we had an excellent start of financial year 23 with 93% year-on-year growth and 16% sequential growth. Our structure approach, diversified global scale of operation and clinical execution capabilities have been the bedrock for such consistent performance. We are well on track to achieve our 40% revenue growth guidance for 23, financial year 23. In fact, looking at the current growth momentum, we are striving to achieve over 50% year-on-year growth in FY23. The following are some of the key highlights of the quarter gone by. <clears throat> We continue to gain significant market share in India, and some of the large BFSI clients that we had won in the last financial year are slated to go live towards the tail end of financial year 23. The deep integration required for such clients take approximately four to six months, which is why there is a lag. However, once completed, this relationship becomes a very sticky proposition. We are in the process of integrating all platforms that we had acquired during the last financial year, and we should see the synergy benefit of these integration paying out from the next quarter onwards, next few quarter onwards, in fact. As a part of our rapid initiative, we have opened a center of excellence in Bangalore for our research and development initiative. In terms of conversational commerce, we are witnessing a good traction from enterprises in digitizing their customer transaction experience over business messaging platforms such as WhatsApp, Viber, and Facebook. We onboarded clients like Coca-Cola in UAE where they have digitized the customer transaction experience over WhatsApp business messaging. During the quarter gone by, we have added 76 employees and 66 employee resigned in quarter Q1 FY23. We believe that the iteration level will normalize to historical level in couple of quarters. In LATAM, as highlighted during the last quarter earning call, we are expanding in Chile, Mexico, and Ecuador. Further, the technology team at Mesavian is building an omnichannel platform that will be orchestrated the personalized communication through AI and ML and have customer data platform capability embedded into this, into it. This development cost of about 59 million INR is being capitalized in Q1 FY23. Further, in terms of our capital allocation strategy, we have done well with our geographical expansion strategy through organic and inorganic initiatives. Currently, our immediate priority in terms of our inorganic strategy is to augment our existing product portfolio with a few cutting-edge futuristic technologies. Some of these proposed acquisitions may not warrant significant capital to be deployed. Hence, considering the current capital commitments plus the proposed acquisition, we may have surplus cash from the next uh, two years roadmap perspective, which, is, which are returning to our shareholder through open market buyback program of up to 1200 million that was launched earlier this month. In addition to buyback, we intend to increase the dividend payout ratio as part of our stated dividend policy and link the dividend payout ratio up to 40% of the free cash generated over FY23 to 25. Last month of the lead, it gives me immense pleasure to highlight that Root Mobile is again listed as tier one position in both MNO and Enterprise Edition of A2P Messaging Vendor Benchmarking Report by Roco. With this, I will now turn it over to Gautam to take us through the financial. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rajdeep. 
Good evening, everyone. Hope you and your family are safe and fine. We have already uploaded our quarterly earnings presentation on our website as well as on the stock exchanges websites. Hope you had a chance to go through the presentation. I'll quickly summarize our financial and operating performance during Q1 FY23 before opening the floor for Q&A. The key takeaway from our financial performance in Q1 FY23 has been the strong revenue growth momentum. Revenue growth of 93% on a YOY basis and 16% on a sequential basis, coupled with significant expansion of margins. Adjusted PAT grew by 131% on a YOY basis and 38% on a sequential basis. As highlighted earlier, Q1 is traditionally not our strongest quarter, and yet we have delivered an industry-leading growth. In volume terms, we have processed over 24.8 billion transactions, uh, 8 billion billable transactions in Q1, as against 52 billion billable transactions in FY22, which is again the highest quarterly billable volumes processed by us till date. Such exemplary financial performance in Q1 FY23 has laid a very strong foundation for a superlative FY23 uh, for full year financial performance. With this backdrop, let me walk you through our financial performance. Revenue from operations grew by 93% from Rs. Uh, 3775 million in Q1 FY22 to 7290 million in Q1 FY23. There was a sequential growth of 16%. In, in terms of certain KPIs, billable transactions increased from 7 billion in Q1 FY22 and 18 billion in Q4 FY22 to 25 billion in Q1 FY23. Average realization per Billable transaction reduced to uh, uh, 29.4 pesa compared to 35 pesa last quarter, owing to lower uh, realization, average realization per billable transaction in Massivian, increase in domestic enterprise business in India, and lower average uh, email uh, uh, realization. We had a net revenue retention of 125%. You may refer to slide 17 of the earnings presentation for the same. We added over uh, 200 new customers in Q1 FY23 across all products. Gross profit margin expanded from 20.4% in Q1 FY22 and 21.1% in Q4 FY22 to 22.4% in Q1 FY23. In terms of operating overheads, employee benefit expenses decreased by 2.8% from INR 398 million in Q4 FY22 to INR 387.3 million in Q1 FY23. The decrease was on account of capitalization of salary cost amounting to INR uh, 59 million. Uh, this pertained to the, uh, uh, I mean, cost incurred by the R&D team at Messivian. Messivian is augmenting the capabilities of their omni-channel platform by adding layers like AIML and customer data platform capabilities. In addition to that, we have also completed our annual incre increments in the uh, quarter gone by. And in terms of uh, ESOPs, there was uh, a non-cash charge of uh, INR 72 million going to grant of 7,36,000 stock options to eligible employees of Root Mobile and its subsidiary under the RML ESOP 2021 scheme. 65,000 ESOPs were cancelled during the uh, same period owing to non-performance slash uh, exit of the employees. 76 new employees were onboarded in Q1 FY22, 23, while uh, 66 employees resigned during the same period. Adjust, adjusted for uh, the same EBITDA grew by 75% on a YOY basis from 491 million in Q1 FY22 to 860 million in Q1 FY23. Sequentially, EBITDA grew by 23% from 697 million in Q4 FY22 to 860 million in Q1 FY23. EBITDA margin stood at 11.8% in Q1 FY23 as compared to 11.1% in Q4 FY22. Amortization related to intangibles identified on account of acquisitions stood at 148 million INR. Finance cost relating to unwinding cost on account of acquisitions stood at INR 34 million. Effective tax rate for the quarter was 14%. We had a deferred tax credit uh, of 57 million INR. Adjusted profit for tax grew by 131% YOY from 377 million INR uh, in Q1 FY22 to 872 million in uh, Q1 FY23 as compared to uh, rupees 634 million in Q4 FY22. 
Adjusted PAC margin was 12% in Q1 FY23 as against 10% in Q1 FY22 and 10.1% in Q4 FY22. With this, we open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Keval Shah from Panin Tree Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, am I audible? Yep. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. Congratulations for a good search of number. So I had two questions. Uh, first, is, uh, I'm looking the number of billable transactions. So what uh, boosted the number? And second is on RCA. So I think uh, in the last year, you started uh, monetizing RCA. So what was the current contribution uh, in the revenue? And how are the uh, margin profiles there? Thanks. Kevin, can you repeat your second query? Uh, so I wanted to know what is the current contribution of RCS to the overall uh, revenue and what is the margin profile there? Okay, Kevin, uh, I'll just uh, start with the second question, Rajdeep here. Right now in India, I think Google has just pulled out the RCS, uh, you know, I think from last two months. So probably there is hardly any revenue in last quarter coming from uh, RCS, but it may be in few lakhs only because it was only live for a month. Okay. So you can just answer the first yeah, question. In terms of uh, the, the billable transactions, 24.8 billion transactions were built during the quarter. Yeah, so what was the reason of... Uh, uh, it was close to like 50% of the so what boosted the number? Because if I see the revenue for transaction, it is much lower. No, so the re revenue per transaction, I mean, uh, on a unit economic basis, uh, because of, I think, uh, I didn't mention it uh, during the commentary that uh, because of the increase in volumes in Massivian and in, uh, increase in volumes uh, owing to our increased business in uh, India, domestic business, uh, the real have dropped uh, and uh, since uh, these are low price market volume tends to be very high and hence that that led to significant ramp up of volumes oh, sure. thank you thank you next question is from the line of Abhishek Bandari from Nomura please go ahead All is now being recorded Hello. Yeah, hi. Hello. Am I audible, uh, Rajdeep? Yeah, yeah Rajdeep, okay. uh, thank, thank you. And, you know, very strong guidance. So congratulations on that. Uh, uh, Rajdeep, I just had one very basic industry-level question. Sure. I think you might have seen one of your big competitors recently spoke about, you know, one of the telecom companies taking over one of their clients uh, yeah. by offering a very low pricing. Now, I was just curious to know from you whether do you see this as an industry trend or do you think it's one-off? And what kind of services do you think in your portfolio are at more risk uh, you know, for such kind of things to happen? Abhishek, to be honest, I think even the operator who has taken that uh, contract may uh, maybe just one kind of a strategic call they have taken. And post that uh, RFP, I don't see any of other RFP gone that low. You know, so I think uh, there might be some strategic call uh, coming either from us or from them, you know, like there's one one time. And as far as if you see the risk, probably I see there is a different use cases are increasing day by day in entire CPAS uh, communication channels, you know, and uh, we see a volume growth as well as not only in uh, messaging piece, but as, uh, it's on a different channel of communication, whether it's a Viber or WhatsApp or RCS or email as well, you know. So... If it's a risk wise for me, I don't see there's a risk, but I feel more use cases are going to be adopted by enterprises in coming years down the line. And we may have a different uh, shift from uh, messaging to another channel, but 
different channels may be used and different use cases will evolve so just to clarify do you mean to say uh, sms part of a business is at risk if the telecom company no, want to no, move right. here it is not at risk at all because the sms volume is increasing every quarter on quarter as a entire market right because there are so many use cases are being utilized for sms is also i'm i mean to say that even for whatsapp messaging or viber or voice or email that volume is also increasing every quarter that's the trend we see okay thank you so, rajdeep my second question is you know when we uh, you know look at some of the public statement by the telecom companies uh, you know the largest one is speaking very aggressive have you know having very aggressive plans on cfas business as such and uh, frankly speaking if you look at it uh, you know the size of the industry is not really very large that it can accommodate multiple players uh, do you think uh, you know the kind of areas where the telecom companies are going to focus on will be significantly different from the places where we are focusing uh definitely see if you see global market you know there are only 8 or 10 large global players who are driving most of the volume you know like including root mobile if you talk with the tier 1 uh, global uh, cpas player so there might be some operators they have their aspiration to become a cpas player but definitely cpas player requires lots of uh, you know like uh, groundwork in terms of support you know in terms of uh, turn around time so i think operator coming to this space maybe they will not serve the enterprise customer the way we are serving right now as a aggregator or as a cpas player and that's why if you see the trend all across the globe there are hardly one or two operator who have ever launched this kind of services out of 900 plus operators because they always believe that working with the cpas player is more sensible for them because we can commit revenue we can uh, get the revenue and we can take care all the other parts of the logistic at our end they are only focused to providing the connectivity and we bring everything to them and that is a very simple trend from last 20 years which i have seen none of the operator globally have ever tried to get into the space by themselves thank you uh, mr abhishek bandari we may request that you return to the question queue for the follow up questions as there are several participants waiting for their turn next question is from the line of tipesh mehta from mk global please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity and congrats for strong execution a couple of questions starting with the uh, macro question now we are seeing let's say uh, significant macro uncertainty plus uh, startup ecosystem is also seeing some implication because of that do you think uh, this environment will pose some challenges to volume growth for us uh india as well as outside of india because now we are uh, global and expanding our presence outside india so some of those geographies facing more challenge than india so if you can provide some perspective about anticipated volume growth now versus let's say at the beginning of quarter any changes you are seeing uh second question is about the margin outlook i think if you can help us what kind of margin one should expect for fy23 i think you are getting indicated about revenue outlook but if you can provide some sense on margin uh last question is if you can share some uh, ocf data uh, so operating cash flow generated during the quarter thank you gautam you are take this yeah yeah sure sure so dipesh in terms of uh, macro uncertainty i think yeah definitely i think uh, rajiv uh, when he started i think uh, the headwinds that's there globally that's there for uh, uh, i mean uh, all, all companies across but but within that i mean we've been able to win a lot of market share from competition and uh, from our perspective a lot of communication that goes through our platform are critical communication so to say and hence uh, we don't see that being affected uh, uh, significantly i mean from a volume that we process uh, perspective but but uh, definitely some amount of uh, promotional or uh, uh, discretionary spend i mean that would kind of come down uh, but that we are kind of increasingly also seeing that being offset by by uh, uh, clients around uh, the travel hospitality where we see increased traction has come in so uh, i mean at the time of covid i mean some of these industries were affected but the other industries were contributing uh, more than their share and i we believe some of that uh, i think will will come back to the the uh other industries like travel hospitality retail uh, and stuff uh so 
there may be a, some, some impact, uh, um, uh, but at this point in time, I mean, uh, the momentum and the kind of runways that we are clocking, even for the current month, we don't, uh, I mean, the, we are not witnessing any, any uh, uh, I mean, effect, so to say, I mean, in terms of slowdown or uh, our volumes getting impacted. In terms of uh, margin outlook, I think we had articulated uh, in our uh, uh, previous earnings call that we are, uh, for this financial year, we are looking at uh, an expansion of 100 to 150 basis points uh, on, on our uh, adjusted uh, Q4 uh, EBITDA. On, 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 on a reported basis, we, we are uh, kind of uh, guiding an EBITDA of uh, about 11 and half to 12 percent between uh, that range for the for the full year. Uh, sorry, Dipesh, what was your third query? I just missed that. Operating cash flow generated during the quarter. So, uh, Dipesh, I just want to highlight here: operating cash flow was positive, but it was uh, to some extent impacted because of uh, an. Uh, a potential price hike that was kind of planned. I mean, in India, the ILDO pricing had increased. So there were a few large customers where we had uh, the POs which had to be uh, renewed because of the uh, uh, price hike, I mean, which was uh, slated to happen from 3rd of July. So, uh, and hence some of those large customers, uh, there have been some, some impact on the receivable side. So receivable side, uh, so uh, the day sales outstanding had increased marginally, which has kind of eaten into the uh, operating cash flow. Uh, but, but having said that, uh, I mean, some of, some of those receivables, I mean, are from uh, uh, the largest of clients and, ones, and, and some of these POs have already been renewed and uh, the payments have also been processed by, by some of those large entities. So from an uh, OCF perspective, as guided earlier, we uh, are guiding uh, an OCF uh, uh, on a full year basis of uh, about 70-75% about OCF conversion. I mean cash conversion. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Anil Nahata, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, some couple of questions around the margin. Uh, the first question is around the large bank deal that uh, we won and that was reported by SBFC Security in the report. Other places. Uh, what kind of gross margins are there? I mean, is it gross margin negative level or it is EBITDA negative level? That deal? Okay, okay. Uh, Anil, let, uh, let me answer your question. And thanks for asking this question. Because there is already a lot of misleading information is being shared in the market or the media. I think which I want to make sure I clarify all this. First of all, we are the L2 for that particular project and L1 is one large operator. And there is another vendor which is L3. So for that particular bank, L1 gets 60% of the traffic, L2 gets 30% of the traffic and L3 gets 10% of the traffic. We took a strategic call to have this account and plus all the PSU banks, there is no DLT charges applied. So they are by default exempted from the DLT charges. We as a company have hosted SMSC with two operator where we get revenue share also for every single SMSC we ter terminate over there. So combined, if you see overall, we always have the upper hand to make sure to take some strategic call if required in coming year or in past and to have a certain customer like this. Just to share with you all, we were serving this customer from last three years. We are were already onboard, onboarded as an in-panel vendor with this customer for last three years. We were serving only for their promotional traffic and it took almost eight months for us to integrate with that particular uh, bank. So I think it's not happened overnight. And we were very clear that what all we are taking because the traffic is only going to be 30 percent and if there is going to be any margin impact, we will handle that. But if you see now, overall combined uh, margin for uh, GP for India is over 23 percent. So the Indian margins are at 23 percent is what you said overall. Overall combined margin, whatever traffic we do now. 
So that is NLD plus ILD. Combined, that's all entire traffic. And that includes the SMSP kind of revenues also, the platform revenue. Everything, everything is a combined. Okay. So Gautam, my request is uh, going forward, if you can kindly consider to give a couple of breakups uh, in your quarterly reports. One is on the breakup between the platform and the revenues and margins versus that messaging one. So, 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 Anil, I think we will not like to talk about the platform play. We are a CPaaS player and we are very proud to known as a CPaaS player. Okay. Because we already have a platform which is operator driven, which have, we have our firewall deployed with 10 operators. We know what this platform, but we want to know as a CPaaS player is more important than segregating a revenue or platform. Because if you see our 365 square is a complete platform revenue, which is firewall solution. But I think we are following a particular protocol from last so many quarters. I think we will continue to do this way. Fair enough. I appreciate that point of view. Uh, yeah. The only other question I have on the gross margin is, would it be possible to sort of think India termination accounts for nearly 45% of the termination and the rest of the world is another 50%. Would it be possible to share the kind of, just like you said right now, the Indian gross margin at 23% on this quarterly presentation, if you can break that out, that will be very helpful. That's all. Definitely take your advice and thank you for sharing that and we will collectively take a call on that. Thank you. We will uh, think over it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Chopra from GSAM. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations to the team on a strong start to the year. Uh, <clears throat> firstly, uh, my question was uh, Rajdeep or, or Gautam. The gross margin that expanded this quarter uh, by almost 130 basis points, uh, could you just maybe uh, help us through a couple of factors that drove that uh, and uh, especially in the wake of, uh, of of the fact that realizations had gone down uh, right. so was this entirely mrm or uh, was there uh, any other factor also that drove this so, uh that is good question it's a combination of mrm root mobile and uh, mesavian we have taken a collective call last quarter that we will make sure uh, we will increase pricing for ILD customers because most of the ILD customers, they are stick with us because of our quality of services. And there are many customers who end up paying higher price and they are still using our services and including some of the large OTT players. Instead of send, getting 20 million traffic from them every day, uh, we are happy to get uh, 10 million at higher price. And that was another reason uh, this ILD also impacted uh, in our gross margin. And we are going to take this call in coming quarters also. We will try to focus more on a margin based a scenario rather than just a volume based. In spite of that, we are volume is also increasing. And because I think now OTT player or the large uh, ILD customers, they are definitely looking out for a quality of services. And I think I, our area focus is going to be on that side rather than more on volume for those. And uh, yes, there is a definitely MRM and uh, uh, Mesavian did added. Uh, Gautam, if you want to add on this. Yeah. Sure. So, Ashish, uh, uh, so the reason for margin expansion is largely highlighted. Uh, Messivian definitely, I mean, has led to the expansion of margin. Plus, we've seen uh, uh, a very strong growth in, uh, sorry, Messivian and Mr. Messaging both have contributed to the expansion of margin. In addition to that, we have now uh, our domestic enterprise business in India has increased quite a bit. And uh, the, the domestic enterprise business is a very high margin business. And uh, uh, so these were some of the factors that led to significant, uh, uh, I mean, the kind of expansion that we've seen on the gross margin. Well, see, just to add, there are few banks we have integrated uh, in last quarter, and now I, we start getting traffic from that. It is not the SBI, but I'm talking about Bank of India and Bank of Baroda and IDBI Bank. So those are uh, few customers. Understood. So, so how should we think about maybe the gross margin trajectory going forward as you uh, maybe reprice uh, some of your OTT or ILD customers and as the India enterprise business increases? Is there is there a target margin at the gross level that you uh, believe you will be able to get to once uh, you are maybe through with the bulk of this exercise? Or do you think that this is a very defensible margin going forward as you grow volume? So I think we always have the aspiration to grow our margin up to 30% because we believe that uh, margin over WhatsApp, voice, email are much higher than SMS, you know. 
so i think uh, right now we are focusing more between 21 to 25 percent what uh, in next uh, one year two year down the line and but we always has a vision to achieve over 30 percent margin in coming few years understood and uh, just in in terms of uh, the employee expenses this quarter so i think uh, based on the discussion last quarter you had mentioned that the 38 39 crores of employee expenses uh, there was a residual 5 crores to come from mrm acquisition and 3 to 4 crores uh, from the salary revisions so we were expecting to go up to 47 48 uh, but uh, i think even after adjusting for uh, 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 the r and d team of machine the adjustment that you took there i think it's around 40 to 43 crores this quarter so I just uh, and where where did the savings come from was it simply the fact that the 66 exits were higher than you anticipated and this goes back up or is there something else? Ashish, uh, the thing is, uh, I think last quarter uh, there were certain one-offs that we had incurred in that quarter in terms of staff welfare and stuff. That is not there in this quarter and that has actually led to the delta. Okay. And uh, Gautam, you also, I think, uh, last quarter had shared a bridge in terms of the contribution from uh, the acquired entities. Uh, could you could you just uh, help us with the same for this quarter as well? Uh, in terms of revenue, yeah, I'll give you the numbers. Yeah. So, uh, Call to Connect did a revenue of uh, 8.34 crores. 365 squared did about 1.5 million euros. Mr. Messaging did uh, about 160, 1670 million in terms of revenue, and Messivian did uh, about 470 million in terms of revenue. Okay, that's very helpful. And uh, in, in the new products, you uh, have enlisted quite a lot of them, right? In terms of email, voice, RCS, WhatsApp, FB Messenger. Uh, RCS obviously was marginal this time, but currently in your base of revenues from new products, are there any one or two of these which are dominating the bulk of the share or is it spread across all of these other products uh, except RCS? No, I think Ashish, if you say uh, WhatsApp and Viber is also contributing well because our, uh, our Viber product in uh, Bangladesh is really doing well over there and uh, WhatsApp is definitely one product. Email is also adding lots of uh, revenue. Uh, so it's a combined, you know, like. Uh... So this is spread across all products, but uh, IP messaging, I mean, uh, is something where we see a very uh, high attraction from enterprises. Understood. And one last question from me. Uh, could you just elaborate a little bit more on the adjustment uh, around Massivian? I couldn't fully understand uh, the non-cash uh, uh, intangible assets in the development uh, that that he took of 59 million this quarter. Sure. So Ashish, uh, we are trying to develop a platform uh, and Massivian, I mean, largely to start with, it would be for the uh, Latin market where uh, this platform will be able to orchestrate uh, uh, a lot of uh, capabilities around AI, ML, and CDP. Uh, so, Massivian team has already taken the initiative of developing that uh, product for which we've identified a dedicated R&D team. And uh, the amount of 559 million that's been capitalized is essentially the cost that is attributable to the development of that in the quarter gone by. Uh, and as per the project report that we have, this uh, uh, product uh, or this platform should be up and running. I mean, the kind of R&D expense uh, uh, that we're looking at for this uh, uh, should be uh, within the $2 million uh, 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 value. Okay. So, so this is a cost which will be incurred in the future quarters as well, considering uh, that yes. this is work in progress, but you will call it out separately over and yes. above the employee costs. That's correct. Understood. Got it. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much for answering my question. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ashish. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Manik Taneja from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, my apologies that I joined late, and thereby this might be repetitive. 
I just wanted to understand from you as to how are you seeing the 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 adoption of WhatsApp and other channels given the increase in pricing by WhatsApp. And secondly, also wanted to understand from you, given some of your large uh, OTT or digital native customers are uh, are uh, trying to convince the the government on the changes to ILD pr uh, pricing. So if you could help us understand on that front, thank you. Money, what was the first question? Sorry. So my first question was with regards to the increase in pricing for WhatsApp. How has yeah, okay. That has so, that played an impact in terms of numbers this quarter, and how is that impacting your adoption by customers? Thanks. So not exactly, Manik. There are lots of POCs being uh, done as of as we speak, and probably we will see more WhatsApp uh, accounts in this particular quarter. Uh, in spite of price increase, there are different use cases. It all depends. You know, the digital adoption is more about what use cases and how, what kind of user engagement the enterprise are looking at. And based on different use cases, WhatsApp can be a best customer support, uh, you know, like a scenario where customer support can be uh, moved to uh, entirely on WhatsApp for business. So there are many customers who are paying a uh, higher price because they see value in WhatsApp, uh, because there are lots of problems is being solved. Uh, so it depends on use case to use case basis. Uh, we don't see any kind of uh, uh, changes and we do see adoption ratios increasing uh, uh, day by day. Or WhatsApp. Sure. And, and my other question was, yeah, yeah, about uh, some of our large OTT players talking about uh, price decrease or something like that, right? About in-app or can we just say in-app? Yes, both in-app and the fact that in their case, a lot of their volumes are considered as ILD volumes. So, so they've been trying to to petition the government in terms of considering their business as or their their volumes as as NLD volume. Yeah, it's a good question, uh, Manik. There are almost uh, 60 to 74 brands right now who's been uh, treated as a ILD, uh, you know, like for international. And this discussion is happening from last three years, in fact, or two years, in fact, you know. And uh, it is up to the try and the operator to take a call on it. Uh, logically, there are lots of requirement uh, government has for them because they need to host their service, uh, servers within India and they need to have a user agreement within uh, India entity. So there are lots of uh, loop, uh, you know, like legal aspect which somehow they need to comply with where they still struggling to do that. So I don't think there is any challenge because it is not going to happen because they're talking about this for last so many years. As far as the in-app is concerned, definitely in-app is always there in almost all the uh, app like whether it's uh, any uh, shopping app or like Amazon or Flipkart, you know, this uh, in-app notification options are always available. But the criteria for user experience or the customer trust is always SMS, you know, like SMS is treated as a more on a trust factor because I really want to wait. If I use my credit card, I want to receive SMS and it is quick and it is secure also. It doesn't require data. It goes over GSM band. You know, there are so many points. In fact, uh, people having uh, this app are already having in-app option. They still prefer to use, uh, uh, you know, SMS because the conversion ratio is much higher over SMS as compared to in-app. And if you know there are multiple ways of authentication is still available as of as we speak, whether it's a mobile identity or a flash call, you name it, or Google Authenticator. There are all n number of options are still available in the market from last so many years. But the question is adoption, you know, like most of the enterprise believe that the SMS is a faster and ubiquitous way to deliver and receive a message and it can have a better conversion ratio through uh, SMS. Sure. Thank you and all the best for the future. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Parab Sitwani from Sahasrar Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, congratulations on a very excellent quarter. Uh, I have just a few very basic questions. Uh, first of all, what is the effective tax rate that we should assume? Yeah, so the effective tax rate should be uh, around, uh, I mean, between 15 to 18 percent, depending on, I mean, so we are working out of multiple geographies and different geographies have different tax regimes. So it's difficult to kind of pinpoint at a particular tax rate, but yeah, you can take it at the higher side at 18%. Uh, okay. And uh, 
uh, what do you uh, mean by net revenue retention exactly essentially uh, uh, net revenue retention is uh, the customers uh, the existing customers in the prior period how they have fared in the existing period okay so if it goes to 120 means it goes beyond 100% that means they have increased uh, their uh, okay, uh, revenue yeah revenue. okay and um, uh, uh, is there a relation between uh, mobile network operators and the head count i mean uh, in the presentation slide there was uh, at different geographies the number of mnos and uh, the employees so no, uh, that slide essentially uh, we are trying to highlight uh, our global playbook strategy where wherein uh, we are trying to highlight uh, that uh, so we sit in between an operator or an, uh, the infrastructure provider uh, and uh, the enterprise so we are trying to just kind of highlight the global diaspora and how are we spread across and the kind of relationship that we share with operators globally Oh. there is one more slide. i think within that uh, particular uh, slide there is number of uh, firewall deployment uh, you know we did in different part of the world yeah yeah and uh, th just this one last question uh, most of the means most of the newer companies are trying to move their communications to whatsapp and uh, uh i would i just want to understand what is the barrier to entry for uh, communications on whatsapp for other players in the market and what is our competitive advantage for the same See, there are multiple cpas player in india and abroad also you know like we are a partner of facebook and we are you know like authorized partner of facebook and meta actually so if you talk about you, you you cannot just go and get a, li a license with uh, meta that you can build uh, you know what's a api you really need to go and project yourself that you can handle customer you have a decent amount of customer you have a decent amount of base you know so i think there are only few number of people in india who got that uh, bsp license which is like uh, authorized uh, meta partners so that is one thing as far as the new as companies moving to whatsapp it all depends how much they want to spend you know like whatsapp is 55 paisa as compared to 10 paisa sms so again as i said it all depends on use case to use case if there is a use case which required customer support and whatsapp for that uh, whatsapp is the best option to go for if it is a otp authentication then sms is the best option to go for if it's a alert it's a sms right so you don't want to send alert at 55 paisa rather which you can send it 10 paisa or 12 paisa so that is the whole idea it all depends on enterprise to select how best they want to engage with their customer and how much they want to spend we as a company are providing channel of communication we have all the channels available within our portfolio let the customer decide how they want to communicate so our role is very simple we provide channels it up, it's up to the customer to select which channel they want to communicate with thank you more they use whatsapp more revenue will generate to be honest thank you Mr Parab we may request that you return to the queue for follow up questions as there are several participants waiting for their turn next question is from the line of Chirag Kachadia from Ashika Institutional Equities please go ahead hello uh, congratulations on the set of numbers uh, sir i have a few questions like uh, uh, you know, your voice is not very clear now it's audible sir yeah now you better yeah i have a few question with respect to your business what are other new ideas other than this you can able to grow the voice is breaking sir it's not very clear now it's proper sir yeah am i audible you are yeah so what are other grow area growing area for us other than this sms whatsapp and uh, this alert services so i think uh, there are lots of uh, Uh, i think channels which we already have as a part of our uh, offering email is also one of that and we do see good traction over email business uh, i think we are also now working in different uh, areas something like especially into ucas which is more on a voice uh, solution and we want to focus more on uh, mobile identity because we believe that the authentication in coming years down the line for a banking segment requires more better way to authenticate and seamless authentication and probably mobile uh, identity can add lots of value during that time 
and keeping that in mind we want to add two portfolio enhancement within our product uh, especially one in voice and one in uh, mobile identity okay and sir like uh, facebook uh, gradually acquiring their uh, entire uh, eco ecosystem related to their business line so they acquired instagram and they uh, whatsapp and all so such a large mna which change the industry structure entirely of communication does it make any impact on our business model because they do backward integration continuously so it's a good for us right it's a single vendor agreement and uh, if it's a facebook meta i have a master agreement with meta whatever they acquire by default we can start serving those customers is that advantage for us you really don't need to go and sign a agreement with whatsapp or instagram separately uh, rather than just one agreement with meta is enough to serve them okay and sir who are other players in india and globally similar to what the service we provide so we are very clear from day one you know like i just wanted to make this thing again i want to clarify why we are different there is a one blog i have also written today that what is the difference between global c++ player and domestic c++ player when we talk about single uh, let's take a simple a simple example just for knowledge i'm sharing this to everyone out here if i onboard one ott player whether it's a facebook google or anybody they are not using my connectivity only for india they use my connectivity for more than 30 40 countries which means that i get additional 40 opportunity with the same customer to serve them in various part of the world and we generate revenue not just for from one country but from multiple country tomorrow if anything happened to that customer or there's some regulation change in particular country it is not going to impact me completely just one country will go away and but apart from that we have another 35 country or 36 country almost all the global player when you talk about the uh, uh, sinch tulio uh, message board root mobile infobip we are well placed in terms of our connectivity we got uh, we have a platform which is connected with almost 900 plus operator globally any enterprise coming and using our platform they don't need to go to uh, uh, go and tag do a tie up with domestic partners to have a domestic uh, uh, termination one connectivity can give them 100% coverage is what the global enterprise are looking at right now we compete with all these names which i mentioned as a global partner a global uh, comset every market we go we will definitely get a domestic player if i operate from 20 countries which means that every country uh, we are operate from there must be one domestic part uh, competitor we are going to have whether it's a uae or a colombia or in uh, nigeria or in uk we will have some domestic player and we do compete with some domestic player based out of india and we have seen that growth in our market share in indian market from last two years or three years down the line we believe that what we offer to our customer is not just one connectivity but global connectivity and that is a unique thing we have as a company why we are different than other there are so many questions keeps on coming about platform play and other stuff i have a platform i have a operator uh, driven solution which is smsc we acquired through tele dna we got a firewall complete smsc of idea is been uh, uh, you know handled by uh, tele dna we have deployed our uh, smsc with ericsson with nokia they are my customer through tel tele dna we have deployed our firewall in 10 countries and one of the indian operator also is my customer using my firewall so capability of a platform play we already have in a we are very have in a very large scale we understand there is separate team who are driving my entire operator business we are not merging along with root mobile there is p65 squared their kra and kpi are very simple you go and close only operator driven uh, you know requirement there are n number of uh, uh, rsp coming every single quarter where we are participating to support operators for the requirement either on firewall or on smsc or on dnd Uh, database uh, kind of uh, solutions so that's what the whole idea you know like if you talk about email as a stack probably we have our own email stack through uh, sentin acquisition where many people you know like uh, they use our platform whether it's a bank or enterprise customer so that is a, a, another platform we have of in house entire platform for whatsapp rcs or even for uh, uh, viper has been built in house So we don't want to just say that okay we are there okay we are happy what we are doing but there is lots of things we are doing as a company 
where we believe that in coming year combined synergy of all the product coming together will add lots of value and that's why we are very bullish to give even 40 50% kind of guidance to the market because we believe our strength and what exactly we are building for the future thank you mr chirag we may request that you return to the question queue for the follow up question as there are several participants waiting for their turn next question is from the line of dev from invest yadnia please go ahead hello am i audible hello yeah we can hear you okay uh so congrats on a good set of numbers i have wanted to ask one question so how are we looking at the acquisition part so in this year and going forward also there is a good question you know like uh, definitely as a company as a ceo of this company i definitely want to do some kind of a tuck in uh, acquisition which will add uh, to my product offering you know i will definitely look into something in mobile identity or voice are the two areas which we are working right now and i think we have shared this information uh, last quarter also we are in process of doing some due diligence and probably very soon once the due diligence is uh, done probably we'll announce something in this space okay thank you that that was all for my side thank you next question is from the line of mohana kumar an individual investor please go ahead um congrats on a great set of numbers team uh, i have one quick question around the the whole ideology behind uh, the share buybacks that has been done and even the uh, the thoughts around increasing the dividends per share so you had raised a lot of capital earlier in the year for its big purpose of acquisition so was the buyback done because the share price had pulled back and you saw that as an attractive opportunity to uh buy some shares at a uh, much lower price than you had raised the uh, equity earlier or was it uh, or was there some other thought around it and what is the again what's the ideology behind even the dividend uh, you know returning uh, cash shareholders via dividend sure so uh, i think we articulated that uh, uh, earlier in the call uh, as part of our capital uh, allocation uh, perspective uh, we we uh, raised the money through qip and thereafter we've done a few acquisitions as we've done fair bit of geographical expansion now we are fairly confident uh, comfortable in terms of the uh, geographical expansion that we have done and we are now looking at integrating the platforms creating a unified platform uh, across all all the uh, entities that we've acquired so that is a, a kind of a, 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 i mean as as we speak that that work of the by integration is kind of going on uh, there are few tuck in acquisitions that we are looking at uh, so in terms of the capital commitments that we have for some of the acquisitions that we have done uh, uh, and the potential acquisitions that we are looking at uh, we we realize that we have some surplus cash and uh, uh, hence uh, the buyback was kind of conceptualized uh, it was through an open market route uh of uh, and the uh, uh, total uh, maximum size of the buyback is about 120 odd crores on top of that the business also generates a lot of free cash uh and uh, uh considering i mean uh, the next one one and a half two years we're looking at integrating uh, various platforms we're looking at doing few tuck in acquisitions and making that as part of our unified uh, platform play uh we don't envisage the use of that excess cash uh, at this point in time and hence uh we have uh, we're looking at uh, uh, this buyback program that we're doing plus uh, the dividend payout which will be a percentage of the free cash that's being generated over the next couple of years got it uh, thank you and just another question to follow up uh, you know around the massive and thing you know there's been a lot of discussions around that but um i so i know you you had uh, clarified this to some extent during the last call too but, but just a quick question around uh, the billable uh, uh bill up, billable amount per transaction is much lower at massivian but the margins are higher could you throw some light on that and also just as a follow up on that 
you, the team, you have a pretty big sales team based out of the U.S. Uh, so is there a, an opportunity for cross-sell to the Spanish-speaking folks within the U.S. also, leveraging the Mycelium base? Yeah, so when we are talking about the Americas, uh, essentially, I mean, a large part of that sales team uh, is uh, in and around Colombia, Peru, in the Spanish regions itself. And that's the reason why we have kind of expanded into some of the joining Spanish markets. So definitely that, uh, uh, I mean, we'll be leveraging the existing uh, uh, sales arm of Messivian to expand into some of the newer markets. And we've done few, a bit of hiring in some of those newer markets as well. Uh, coming to uh, the, your first query around the margins. So, uh, so if you look at Messivian, Messivian is out and out a, a deep enterprise uh, uh, play. Where, where they are deeply penetrated with who's who in terms of enterprise. They have uh, over 55, 60 or close to 55, 60% market share in markets like Colombia. They would be second largest player in Peru. Uh, and uh, uh, they, they have kind of built a very robust uh, uh, tech stack, which they are uh, offering it to enterprises. And they uh, and enterprises are using uh, Messivian's platform across various channels, like from SMS, voice, uh, email, uh, and even... Uh, uh, the in-app notification. So, uh, and, and uh, because because of that superior tech stack and a very uh, uh, robust team, I mean, both in terms of sales, in terms of uh, the account management team, they are able to command very high margins from enterprises. And uh, uh, enterprise, enterprises uh, across the world, I mean, even in markets like India, tends to be high, higher gross margin. So they, they are able to command that kind of gross margin. Just that uh, there is some amount of seasonality that is there uh, where Q1 and Q2 calendar year for them tends to be uh, relatively weaker and Q3, Q4 happens to be the, uh, their best quarters. Uh, and uh, uh, again, taking it back to the last quarter and even in this quarter, there is uh, uh, some degree of impact in terms of uh, EBITDA because of that seasonality. But uh, heading into Q3, uh, Q4, we believe uh, Messivian will be firing from all cylinders. Thank you. We have come to the end of question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Rajdeep Kumar Gupta for closing comments. Thanks. Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining our earning calls. If you have any question, you can reach out to our uh, investor relationship team. We are happy to answer all your questions. Thanks once again. Have a nice evening. Take care. Thank you for attending the conference call. If you have any further queries, please send an email to investors at the rate routemobile.com or salman at the rate concepttpr.com. Have a great day. Goodbye.